Let's see, two some sheep she owned and bug me she jar on the two down mountain and new mom be dull metals. Two some sheep, even if your education and studies and reflection is boundless, you and then bug me she jar boundless. Uh, unless you succeed in being in harmony with the Dharma, you will not tame your enemy, Nyumumpi Dao, enemy, or you will not tame your enemy, Nyumumba, the destructive emotions, Nyumumba, uh, and kind of Nyumumba, misclasia, deflections, fixation, whatever, afflictions. But here it's destructive emotions. So here again, Longchen Ba is saying that to some sheep she on the, you know, to some, the to means like study, you know, here says like education and study. And then some is reflections, like, you know, that study it's boundless. So actually, I think, you know, people understand the Dharma teachings very well, right? Very well. Um, what I mean, just intellectually, uh, because, because, you know, all of this, uh, these uh, opportunities that we have, like you can, you can, these days, like you can search almost everything, right? If you don't know something, for example, what does Dharma mean, you know? You can search, it's there online. And um, a lot of books are available in your language. So we like people, you know, like to study. We like um, to read books. We like to listen to the teachings. So that's really good. Um, so these days you have um, more and more um, of the Buddhist teachings, you know, translated into many different languages, you know. It's really great. I mean, it's really great um, so that you will be able to study all of the teachings. Um, but Longchenpa says here, you know, if if um, if you study all of this, you know, and um, and if our fundamental character is not sort of uh, you know atoned or in in harmony with the Dharma, then it doesn't uh, doesn't matter how much we understand. So we will not be able to uh, team or subdue our enemy, he says our enemy, which is the negative emotions. The enemy is the negative emotions. I mean, the, the afflictions, klesha in Sanskrit, right? New and more. So it will never be possible for us to achieve sort of success in our practice without, uh, uh, without putting these teachings into our practice. So today I really want to just like, um, let you know that how important it is, you know, important to practice. I want to just say this over and over and again and again, because, you know, we have enough to understand Dharma and how to practice. I'm sure all of you how to practice Dharma very well, but, um, but the question is how much you practice Dharma. Um, so if our mind, again, is kind of like filled with a lot of uh, negative emotions, you know, when I say negative emotions, you know, such as like greed, anger, um, delusion, attachment, so on and so forth, you know, um, then there is no hope for enlightenment. We have, um, as I said, great opportunity 
to change our minds and to purify all these negative karmas that we accumulated in the past. We have these opportunities, therefore we should try our best to practice Dharma and put the teachings that we have studied into our practice, not just live here as information, you know? Practice, you know, practice meditation and practice brings a sense of presence, you know, presence and brings sort of simple awareness. That's what we are looking for, you know, through the practice. And only awareness brings a real sense of non-dual approach. Um, the more familiar we become uh, with practice and with uh, examining our mind, and the more we pay attention to our mind, the closer we come to finding a solution to whatever problem we have. And uh, the more, um, how do I say, easily sort of we recognize that whatever we experience in our day-to-day -day life, you know, negative emotions, attachment, you know, like day to day, like we have all this, like we have to deal with all this kind of like up and down sort of, you know, like attachment, stress, anxiety, fear. These are uh, what Long Chimba called, you know, our real enemy. Because why they are real enemy? That's the, maybe you think that's part of my mind. But because they, they, if, you, if we, um, I don't like the control, but how do I say, if we control or reduce, you know, these kind of negative emotions, then they are the source of suffering, right? And they can destroy our happiness. They destroy our inner peace. They destroy our friendship. So basically, they destroy our lives. That's why Long Chimba says, enemy, negative emotions, is our real enemy. Because they destroy, destroy our inner peace in life. Because they're always with us. Wherever we go, stay, they're always there with us, right? Even when we go on a retreat, the during our meditation, they're there and destroy our meditation. These thoughts and emotions and memories, this all, this whole this image, you know, it's just so powerful, so powerful. Even though like when we go on a retreat and try to meditate and be silent and by himself and like, you know, try to focus on me, just can't because they are there. So that's why Long Chamba says, they are our real enemies. So as long as we are under the control of this, um, this uh, emotions of our enemies, there is no peace and happiness, you know. It's not, it's not about your work situation. It's not about around like the people. It's, it's about how you deal with your mind, you know, about these thoughts and emotions.
I mean, obviously, you know, this, the situation is important, but the more important is like the inner situation, you know? So in order to sort of team, you know, subdue this, this enemies, so we, need, we need a calm mind. We need a sort of a realistic methods. And we have to understand, understand how to reduce, how to team this enemies. For that reason, uh, first, you have to get into the Dharma. Then you can think about what can, what you can do, and recognizing this precious human life with its freedoms and advantages is extremely important. if you really want to practice Dharma. For me, you know, meditation is one of the most important thing in my life. Nothing else really. So you have to really know what it means. Meditation is to be aware of this destructive thought without trying to control it. But you always have to pay attention to your mind. That is the most difficult part because we're not enough pay attention to our mind. All these destructions, you know, But the more we pay attention to our mind, we will understand it more. And then you, you know, understand your mind more and more and more over the time, slowly, without expectations like that, then you will understand it more. And when you understand your mind more and more than your discipline and freedom, peace and happiness all come naturally. Then you'll be able to tame your destructive emotions through that kind of natural sort of discipline. Otherwise it doesn't work. Oh, I can't do this. I have to do this, this and this, like it's just, too much, right? But uh, the more you pay attention to your, mind, to your mind, you understand it more. The more you understand, your discipline will come together. Then you're able to, uh, you know, reduce and eventually diminish these destructive thoughts, emotions. And when you're able to be aware and when you have a sense of genuine awareness, then all your disturbing emotions are gone. I mean, you know, sometimes we have kind of glimpses of that kind of realization, right? When you be really totally aware, your mind is like, a, if I put it this way, like, it's like totally empty. You know, there's nothing like memories, thoughts, and emotions like that. It's just if you are totally aware of everything, then your disturbing emotions are gone. It's not there because they're not the nature of your mind. So then with this kind of opportunities, you can create the cause of enlightenment. With this kind of opportunities, you can subdue your enemy of these negative emotions. With this kind of opportunities, you can 
continually, you know, create the cause to receive a perfect life for the future. And uh, with this kind of opportunities, you can achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all beings, even like this very lifetime. So, since we have already sort of, we already have these uh, great opportunities, um, we should make really good commitment to practice Dharma. You know, without make commitment, you practice very, sometimes very good, sometimes you don't practice at all. And you can't grow your spiritual, you know, dharma practice like that without a commit commitment, you know. So we have all this great opportunity. Without these good opportunities, it won't, it, it will not be, 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 be possible to find even like dharma, you know. Without the dharma, you know, it, it will not be, possible to tame our mind. It, 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 it doesn't matter who you are. We're not talking about religious. Yeah, if you're not a religious person, we're not talking about you. Ah, you have, when you practice Dharma, you have to be first a religious person, not like that. It's just like you want your mind. You want to understand your mind. Of course, you understand all these destructive emotions attachment, desire, jealousy, anger, all of this are just, we don't have to learn, this is there, right? Are they good? No, they're not benefit. So we have to tame our mind. That's that in order to tame them, I mean like, you know, without the Dharma, like, we, we, we focus only the outer world, right? That's why, you know, like, uh, it's really good. I mean, that's why we have achieved a lot outwardly, but, but we, are, we, are, we are not paying enough attention to our minds inwardly. You know, inwardly we are, you know, very, very beginner, very poor, very beginner. I mean, these days more and more people, I mean, good thing is, you know, people more, more pay attention in, in, about the mind. It's a really good sign. But a long time ago, like upon until now, like we, we focus only develop our world, you know, it's that's why like, you know, we, we, we develop, achieve a lot, but inside, like inwardly, like our mind is so beginner. And so we have to develop our, you know, um, human capacities through practice. Um, and um, and haven't practiced enough, then you know achievement you know comes naturally. We don't have to think about like enlightenment. You know, ah, I want to achieve enlightenment. What is enlightenment? Enlightenment comes naturally, but we have to practice. That's that's the point. And um, if you are, you know, constantly trying to achieve something with, uh, you know, too much expectation in meditation, it's a problem. You know, when we meditate, you know, we have too much expectations. Oh, I had a great meditation. Oh, I have terrible meditation. Doesn't matter good meditation, bad meditation, doesn't, doesn't matter, just keep going without this kind of expectation, you know? If we have this too much expectation, it's a problem. You will not achieve it in, in that way, you know, oh, I have to achieve this because of my expectation. It doesn't work like that. So your achievement comes to you naturally as you become a sort of reasonable person, you know? 
become a very natural sort of, if you do like meditation, like very naturally, very constantly, then uh, achievement comes naturally. And uh, there, there are, of course, there are different kinds of achievement, right? Because when we think about our mind, it's that our mind is just limitless. I really hope that you understand the benefit of Dharma and meditation. Because um, by understanding this, it gives you the opportunity to practice so that you can accomplish your wish for, you know, whatever it is, happiness or enlightenment or whatever. Sometimes, you know, people say, you know, my meditation is difficult. So, you know, not so helpful, you know. And I'm actually filled with a lot of negative emotions during my meditation. And then people sometimes say like, better like when I'm, I have my normal life, then it's better. But when I start to meditate, then I, I feel all of this and then it, that's, that's like harms me in my mind. So better not meditate. Of course, this happens. It's because your Dharma practice is, you know, for a very short time compared to your other activities, right? And then you have too much expectation. It doesn't work, my meditation. Think about that. Like your Dharma time, meditation time is just like, maybe one and a half minutes, you know, maybe two hours a day. Compared to your other time, how can you develop your mind so quickly in a short period of time? So if that's the case, you must encourage yourself, you know, even if you, you encounter a lot of this kind of, dis, you know, what do you call it? thoughts, you know, disturbed your thoughts, uh, you know, you have all these kind of negative emotions in your meditation, you know. I mean, when the, the Mahurum which says like when you practice shamatha, you feel like, oh, I have more thoughts. I mean, that's a good sign, actually. You understand now, like, recognize how much, you know, usually, like, usually during your uh, daily activity, you don't aware how much thoughts you have. As soon as you start meditating, you can see them. So you have to remember it is very normal uh, since you're just a beginner. I mean, we all are beginner. So these distractions are to be expected, okay? Otherwise it's harm to your meditation. Sometimes like I, uh, when my, you know, I go to meditate, you know, sometimes I can just, just focus on my meditation the whole session. Sometimes I just can't, like even one second, it's just, uh, I don't know why, maybe just because of the, the, you know, all the energy of my body or whatever, it's just up and down all the time. You have to be expected that, otherwise, like, not always, as soon as you start meditating, not always your mind is calm and easy, no. So, so you have to expect it that, and uh, you know, uh, making effort, you know, one step at a time, then you know you will succeed for sure. So there is no reason to lose hope if you understand this. If you understand the benefit of dharma. And um, you always need encouragement, enthusiasm, and inspiration. But in order to have all of that, you have to understand the benefit of Dharma and that you, have, you are so fortunate, have precious human life. But at the same time, like, you know, you have to be careful, you know, sometimes like people believe that uh, 
they are, you know, they are better than everyone else. That's not, not confidence, right? When I say like, you have to encourage yourself or enthusiasm, and then you think, like, oh, I'm good. I'm better than this person. I'm, you know, that's not confident. That's, that's, not, that's not courage, right? Or inspiration. That's arrogant. So if you are an arrogant person, eventually you're going to lose respect, you know, and you will, you will develop a lot of um, mistaken views, you know, and not recognize the benefit of practice. Then practice become very difficult and filled with obstacles. So therefore, as a Dharma practitioner, we always have to be very humble, very gentle. You know, that's very important. Even though like your meditation, you know, develops and you have some kind of capacities, like you can see all of that, still you have to sort of keep a sense of humbleness in your mind. Otherwise, there's, a, there's danger that the arrogant, you know, like, so this goes together like humble and also have to be, um, what do you call the very courageous, right? You know, you can, you can develop your confidence. I can do this. I can practice this. At the same time, you have to be gentle, very humble. Anyway, that's that. And then um, 1115. Okay. Unless we limit our desire from within by adopting an attitude of not needing anything at all, then even if we succeed in being the owner of uh, a 3,000 fold, don't come, uh, don't come, don't come, 3,000, okay, 3,000 fold universe, okay, don't come, it will bring no real satisfaction. Yeah, this is another problem, right? <laughs> And this is another important meditation, right? As I mentioned this many, many, many times to all of you. So Long Chimba is talking here about satisfaction, basically, which is for Dharma practitioner, you know, it's one of the most essential parts of our practice. I mean, if you are just an ordinary person who do, do, doesn't believe Dharma, who doesn't want a Dharma, who doesn't believe past and future life, who doesn't believe the cause and karma, don't be satisfied with everything, right? You, you, but as a Dharma practitioner, I think this, uh, the, the satisfaction is very, very part of our the best, sort of gives us a lot of, uh, free time and comfortable, you know, like life. Because, because the genuine satisfaction can bring us uh, real comfortable happiness, you know? And um, I mean, this is another way of uh, talking about how to reduce desire and attachment. And, and, and I think this is another kind of like satisfaction. It's just kind of like another very fancy word for renunciation. So when you say like, you know, follow and desire and not finding satisfaction are the main cause of, um, uh, or you call it uh, not having a genuine renunciation mind because uh, uh, 
follow and desire causes us to experience the, the suffering of dissatisfaction. And uh, it makes us not seek liberation, you know? So if you think that way, well, like the whole thing is naturally suffering if we don't have uh, satisfaction in our mind. So chokshi in Tibetan, chokshi. So having less desire inside our mind is contentment, right? Satisfaction. So according, you know, in Buddhism, uh, peace of mind is achieved by practice satisfaction. So that means we should not try um, we should try to not be attached to so many things that are not necessary in our lives. So we usually work for what we think will bring us joy and make our lives easier and much better. That's absolutely important, right? Very important. But Kamala Shila, um, I think in his, uh, the stages of meditation say, you know, the definition of satisfaction is, uh, uh, you can have what you need and that is enough. And chokshi, um, chokshi means like the definition of ndotpa chongwa means limiting your desire. Definition of limit desire is not being excessively or overly attached to many things that are not necessary in our life. So I think we have to, as a Dharma practitioner, we have to be a very reasonable person, meaning not too much, not too less. Um, and when, when we think about our practice, what makes us unable to succeed in our Dharma practice? You will see it is not it is not finding satisfaction with our minds. That's why, um, um, as I said, you know, the, the satisfaction is important part of our meditation. Because once we have satisfaction, our mind is very um, relaxed. Because then we are not looking for our, I, I want I, I need this I want it. I get this, you know, like then, then we are not like once we have the satisfaction in our mind, then we are not overly busy, you know? So, yeah, so that's uh, two things. Um, so important, especially I think this modern time. Uh, practice satisfaction, limiting your desire. It doesn't mean you can't have anything though. Don't misunderstand. You can have whatever you need, necessary for your life. That's enough, that's it. I mean, you understand. So just uh, go to next. Um, unless we prepare ourselves with the attitude that a death could happen at any time. Yeah, we cannot achieve the great aim that is surely needed at the time of death. All right. Now again, uh, we have, you know, it's bring, you know, this precious human life. I really value a lot my life. I mean, this precious human life. 
this is just great. It's just enough. Not looking for, you know, very become very famous, very wealthy. What is the point? We don't need that, but we have freedom to practice. We have enough everything that in, you know, support our life. Then we have this freedom to practice Dharma. That makes very happy. But, you know, when you think about this kind of human life, it, it could end at, at, at any time. It's so uncertain. So, end of birth is death, right? So whenever that means, whenever there is birth, then, then there is death. Inevitable. We can't do anything, understand that, you know? <laughs> That there is another problem when we when we when we talk about this kind of thing, you know, like a, you know, we understand you know the, the impermanence of life, right? But again, we just don't recognize the impermanence of life at all. We don't have the realization. I mean, we again this intellectual thing, you know, we we understand impermanence. You know, there is nothing permanent. We understand that, but not like. If we recognize it deeply, you know, then we are not going to, as Long Chamber said, we're not going to waste our time even for a minute. If we really, really have, you know, if we have realization of this impermanence of life, we're not going to waste anything because there is no time to waste, you know. Is like, you know, when you investigate, think about the garden masters, you know, in the past and how they, you know, uh, practice and practice about impermanence of life. There's no waste time. But we just, uh, sometimes we uh, suddenly like understand, oh my goodness, when so that this is impermanence and then just like, just for a second and then we're done, we we'll, we'll forget. And then all these distractions and then we never think about impermanence of life. We don't have that kind of realization. We understand that the life gets shorter every month, every day, every minute. But we just don't recognize it or we just don't have enough to think about it in, in deeply, constantly. We always think we are the same person continued like, you know, from birth to the death. We think we're the same person, you know, we spend all of our time hoping and worrying about our future as if we are going to live forever. We all know death will come one day, but uh, we just, um, we always think, it will be some time in the future. <laughs> um, and uh, when our time, uh, our time has run out at the point of death, nothing can stop us from dying. If you don't believe, you know, sort of, uh, what do you call it? causing the uh, past and future life, it, then it doesn't matter. Whenever you die, you, you, if you're, you have a successful life, this life, like you're happy and uh, you're, you're free and you, whatever you want, you have, then you don't have to worry about, you know, death. And whenever you die, that's the end of life, end of journey. But if you believe future life, you, we have to be careful. Death is not end of our life. Another, it is another kind of like door opens, you know? So it, it, it also like the death, the future life is de totally depends on how we do this life. So therefore, according to Buddhism, we believe future life. So therefore, like we have to really 
whatever we do, like not only for this life, but it's also, you know, Therefore, it says, you know, uh, that we need to prepare ourselves with the, 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 the attitude that our death could happen at any time. If it happened at any time right now, I am prepared. I'm already prepared. I'm ready. That kind of we need confident, you know. So what does it mean to prepare? When the time of death comes, we will, you know, leave behind everything. I mean, accept, you know, our spiritual practice, right? Well, I will talk more about death at the May retreat and the Pardo teachings. If you. Uh, want to understand more about that. Because, you know, I think Westerners don't understand about the process of death and especially um, has a limited understanding of what will happen after death and all that kind of like process. Uh, so I think it's important to educate, you know, about, you know, this kind of death process so that you will understand fully what will happen next, you know, and then next, and then next like that. So it will be, uh, it will be really good um, to talk about this kind of in detail about the death process and after death at the Pardo teaching. So not here today. I don't want you scared today. But here I want to say that uh, you should try to do your daily activities uh, together uh, with the Dharma, you know? So then kind of like you are preparing, you know, whatever happens is fine, you know? You can keep your, uh, your worldly activities, but try to do your practice within that, you know, it's, uh, it's not, it's not so easy, but, um, but as I said, if you pay more attention to your mind and try to be aware and, you know, observe everything, then you can do, you can do, you can keep your worldly activities. You don't have to like give up anything you can keep, but just do them with sort of Dharma practice. So in short, what is necessary is to realize that our time is short. And uh, um, death is uncertain. Because of that, we should not be attached to many things that are, that are unnecessary. So that's what I want to tell you, okay? That's, that's, that's very short, you know? Just to recognize the time is short, death is uncertain, so that, that's it actually. So what then what do you want to do? Yeah, you, you sh whatever you want, you should find out. That this is this is fact, true, right? Time is short, death is uncertain. That's true. So then what do you want? You don't care? Eh, it's up to you. Oh, you care? Then you need to do something. It's up to you. trying to find out. I I can't say you should do this, you should not do this. That's what I'm not trying to say but you should just, just follow the fact that sh the time is short, really, really short. And then we don't know that it's very uncertain. Uh, keep that in mind, okay? That's that. 
Then Rangin Rangin Dershan, Tana Shomet, the Mabjana, Chagbanchen, the Taxin Chu Shermachet. If we don't overcome our own faults and cultivate impartial, pure perception, then a biased attitude will prevent us from in, entering the ranks of the ranks of the Mahayana Oget. probably enter Chagdang Jante Takchinjis Chagdang. Where is the check the biased charity uh, provender? Hmm. I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, so, um, uh, well, here we, we are talking about um, faults, right? Our own faults, you know, if we don't overcome our own faults. Rangin Rangin Darshang said, we Well, this is, uh, if we don't overcome our own faults and cultivate impartial pure perception. Then biased, ah, okay. Biased attitude will prevent us from entering the rings of Mahayana, okay. Well, here is where we're talking about, I think two things, ego and faults. Usually because we don't recognize our own faults, we don't want to think about it because of ego clinging, right? Selfishness. But it's, it, it says here, if we don't recognize our own faults, this will prevent us from entering into the Mahayana path because um, prevent, you know, us from entering into Mahayana path because of our, e you know, um, the selfishness, arrogance, you know, so, Long Chimba, according to Long Chimba says, it's important to, to recognize your personal faults and then making changes uh, that deal with those faults. Um, so I think this is also kind of important because if we want to develop our sort of personal capacity, then um, the most important thing is to recognize our faults. So then there is a good chance for us to change, right? And uh, because, you know, the, the only way we can change our faults is, is by recognizing the fault. and uh, sort of taking um, then positive steps to change them. Um, so usually we don't, right? We don't want to think about it. We don't want to, uh, uh, we don't recognize our fault. We always blame others, right? Um, I mean, most time. So the first, I think in order to recognize our faults, first, I think, uh, first thing that we need to do is we have to be more aware of our actions. You know, we just need to look at the result of our actions. And sometimes not our problems, sometimes our problems. So therefore we have to just to be aware of our actions. And also like if, if we want to recognize our personal faults, our own faults, I think uh, it's also very important that, you know, uh, we need to listen to others, those who are our good friends of us, you know, they can tell us like very honestly, right? Um, um, 
So, you know, the first we have to, I think, in order to recognize our own faults, we have to uh, be aware of our actions. And also, um, there are many ways we can understand it, but uh, also like listen to others, you know, people who are very um, good for us, they will tell us exactly. Um, at the same time, you know, do not become worried with, uh, you know, every little things that people say about you, you know. So I think the best way to uh, practice um, Well, Long Chimba is, you know, in order to, uh, the best way to practice Buddhism is uh, try to open your mind. Um, try to be honest with your practice. Like don't, which, what I mean is, you know, like don't pretend something that you are not, you know, then you are not honest with your meditation. So you have to really recognize like how much your capacity, you know? Sometimes people say, eh, yeah, I, this is easy to practice. This is, you know, you have to be very honest with your, with your practice. And uh, uh, more importantly, to get rid of the idea of uh, being a perfect, you know? I think in, the Western, you know, like this is this is problem, you know, because whatever you want, you want to do it perfectly, no make without any mistakes. I want to be a perfect worker. I want to be perfect, you know, um, driver. I want a perfect this and this and that. But in Buddhism, if you think yourself, I want to be a perfect practitioner, you are already lost yourself. There's, there's no perfect. Even Buddha made mistakes, even Pamasambhava made mistakes. So if you have that kind of idea of being a perfect, then you are not going to become a, a good practitioner at all. And that I can tell you. If you want to be a good practitioner, then abandon the idea to make everything perfect. You have to avoid pressure yourself, you know. Hey, I have to be perfect. I can't make any mistake, you know. Otherwise, you know, I have less chance to become this and this and this. Avoid that kind of perfection, you know. And also, of course, avoid look down yourself. You know, I am a bad practitioner. I will not be able to change anything. I'm terrible meditator. Get rid of that kind of, you know, compression to yourself. Be confident, but not selfish, right? And also important to Avoid, you know, like I am the best. I know this, I know that, you know, like some people are like that, you know, avoid that kind of arrogance. So being a Buddhist practitioner means Try to discover your own truth. When you make mistake, totally fine. Recognize it and try to change it. In order to change your faults, 
also you should practice bodhicitta i think because you know this allows all your actions to become beneficial so bodhicitta uh, makes we have sort of bigger view so that we can recognize our own faults but we don't recognize or we don't want to recognize our fault because of the ego right so antidote like you know bodhicitta bodhicitta gives us a bigger view um even even though all these uh, samsaric problems are still there but when we develop a bigger view practice bodhicitta the way that we act in regard to all the problems will slowly change so without this bigger view or openness we will become a very um what do you call it um irritable person who is bothered by everything when very little things happens can change the whole attitude right that's what we call in tibet you know irritable person that means like your mind is not open there is no bodhicitta you know have you i mean you don't have a bigger view <laughs> remember um and the the adverse of mind training uh, teaching it says in my every action i will watch my mind the moment destructive emotions arise i will confirm them as soon as they arise as they will destroy both myself and others do you remember that verse it's really important to recognize our own faults a develop a bigger view as a buddhist practitioner i'm i'm saying that i'm saying buddhist practice not i'm i'm not saying uh, the ordinary <clears throat> people view of the ordinary people i'm not saying that uh, that's not our business but for us as if you consider yourself as a buddhist practitioner then i think this is uh, this is a really good instruction you know recognize our own faults develop bigger view to absorb and examine our mind in all kinds of activities or under all kind of situation um and um uh, to purpose of learn the dharma and doing spiritual practice should be to orientate ourselves towards enlightenment you know uh, the 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 um towards the uh, our our um um re, uh, how do i say El, uh, eliminating you know the mental or emotional afflictions right that's the purpose of practice dharma we usually look uh, outside to find the faults of others and pay so little attention to our own faults right that's wrong according to mahayana practitioners as a mahayana practitioners we should constantly observe our own mind our own actions our you know otherwise you know our uh, what do you call it the self center um the 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 ego you know ego searches constantly for distraction and then the distraction itself becomes a problem right then we don't recognize our own faults and people really you know spend their time in negative activities 
all this is because as Long Chamber says in this teaching, you know, we don't recognize ego cleaning as our real enemy. Therefore, um, the situations that, you know, um, harm us comes down to um, one thing, it is cleaning to ourself. Um, and then, so again, Long Chamba says here that, you know, if we are not able to recognize our own fault and unable to cultivate, cultivate pure perception, then <clears throat> we will not be able to enter the rings of the Mahayana, right? So basically, Long Chamba said, uh, we should recognize our own faults and cultivate pure perception. That means we should try to diminish our own ego and try to see others as uh, precious. That's how you practice bodhicitta, right? So that's the that's problem, you know, like the ego. The ego, we have a very strong ego because then so that we don't want to recognize our own faults and we don't have a pure perception because the ego, I am the best. I am better than you. I want happiness. I don't care you, you know? So that's why, you know, we should recognize our own fault. In order to recognize our own fault, we have to be aware, observe all the time, constantly in your daily life, daily activities. Then you will see, and then you develop like bigger view so that eventually you have a pure perception so that you can respect others. You don't want to harm others. So that's actually basically, you know, Hong Jinpa is trying to sell. Um, so we must, we must develop bodhicitta. There is a, you know, there is nothing, you know, like, Actually, you know, we talked about we are very fortunate that we made, we entered into Mahayana teachings like that. I mean, it's very fortunate, but uh, if we don't practice bodhicitta, there's actually nothing we can do uh, without bodhicitta if we have entered into Mahayana path. Mahayana is about bodhicitta, basically. Practice bodhicitta, basically try to diminish the ego. Remember Shantidewa said, whatever harm, fear or, or suffering they are in the, this world come from self, selfishness. So, you know, think about bodhicitta is the key. Um, that's that that sentence, the essence of that sentence is just try to recognize our own faults and uh, develop pure perception uh, by meditating on bodhicitta. Uh, now the next comes from the Simchin, Pamar Majara, Chikjang Mepi, Nyarje, Hyanship Chisim, Ti, Jun Chit Mepi, Goni, Molam, Namtak Matun, Yampanji, Irkam. Okay, since all the sentient beings among the six classes and the, the, the three realms have not been our own parents, unless we make pure aspiration with unceasing compassion and bodhicitta, we cannot open the treasury of the altruism. Okay, this is, uh, this is yeah. Uh, um, Okay, I have to finish this, otherwise uh, the time goes so fast. 
and if you don't do everything on time, you guys don't like me. Uh, so now here, um, yeah, this is people who believe future life, past and future life. If you don't believe, don't worry about it. If you believe, yeah, this is the thing. Uh, so the, the basically here he says like, you have to practice bodhicitta in order to um, help others, respect. So my teachers always say, when you eat, eat with bodhicitta, when you stand, stand with bodhicitta. When you sit, sit with bodhicitta. When you sleep, sleep with bodhicitta. When you look, look with bodhicitta. When you speak, speak with bodhicitta. It's not easy, but that's bodhisattvas do. So that means if you do all your actions with bodhicitta, you are not going to make any mistakes. Then you don't have to recognize you on your, your own faults. And if you do all your actions with, uh, with um, practice bodhicitta, very soon, one day you will reach the genuine bodhisattva path and you become a bodhisattva. And, um, and that bodhisattva path is the result of your positive actions. And um, through those actions, you will be able to um, diminish all uh, the negative emotions and be uh, able to stop accumulating future sort of negative karma. So basically, Longchenpa is saying that sentient beings, all the sentient beings are the foundation of our practice. That's what he's saying, you know, like without all these sentient beings, we cannot. How do, how do you practice bodhicitta? I mean, basically without, without all sentient beings, how do you practice bodhicitta? Oh yeah, I practice bodhicitta for myself. That's not bodhicitta, right? So I don't know how to practice bodhicitta without all sentient beings. Without sentient beings, we cannot walk onto the bodhisattva path. You know, that's why it's basically Longchenpa says, you know, here like uh, all the all sentient beings are so important for even like for our own sort of benefit to develop bodhicitta mind. Uh, so that's that. Now I think I'm going. We're going to meditate a little bit, okay? Um, meditate maybe bodhicitta a little bit. Um, okay, ten, uh, ten thirty to eleven fifteen, so eleven forty-five. So oh, oh, we don't have time. Um, uh, it's already 11.43. Maybe I'm going to stop here. And then when we come back um, after the lunch, then we can, if we practice bodhicitta or maybe, you know, practice bodhicitta. I mean, it doesn't really much that difference. Like just practice for, for five minutes doesn't really, um, I think, well, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to follow the schedule because make sure that you're happy with the schedule, okay? So I think we, um, um, it says 11.45. What is this? No, no. 11.45. Oh, we have time. Let me see this. Oh, no, no, we don't have time. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Um, sorry about that, it confused you. So, 
Um, can you say the, the closing prayers? Like you don't have to say all of them, but maybe just say one dedication prayer. And then uh, we have lunch and uh, uh, come back at one o'clock. We start teaching um, and meditation at one o'clock, okay? So can you, uh, we should dedicate um, all this, uh, you know, uh, positive karma that we created this morning before you get angry. 